In this video, we're going to look at Bash's functions, which allow us to subdivide our scripts into units of work, as well as for in loops, which allow us to take redundant repetitive tasks and repeat them for inputs of varying lengths. Right? So I'm in a Bash shell, and before I get into giving you the syntax of a function, let's just try one out really quickly. And we can actually define these functions and write these loops interactively at the REPL or the read evaluate print loop, which we're working at here, right? So if I define a function such as uh, hello func, I can give it a name and then a parameter list. This function won't have any parameters. And then an open curly brace to say, here is the beginning of my function body, followed by whatever commands I want. So I'm just going to say, let's use the classic hello world example for uh, this and we'll use the echo program, which will just repeat that message back out to us in a closing curly brace to say that's the end of my function definition. So how do we actually call a function in bash? Well, we write the name of it out as if it were a command, right? And notice that I didn't have to put any parentheses following that function name. Bash treats this as if it were a command or potentially even a program, uh, but allows us to write functions and use them as if they are other commands in our system. And so here we see that the hello func function was evaluated. Right? So let's take a look at the specific syntax here and then talk a little bit about how do we access parameters. Well, as we just saw, the syntax for a function definition is we state the function's name followed by parentheses and these parentheses are not going to include our parameters, right? So the parentheses are a signal that, hey, we are defining a function here and the open curly braces are going to surround our uh, block of commands and we can have more than one command inside of that block, even though in the example we only had one. Inside of that function body, we can use the variables discussed previously uh, of the positional arguments. So if we wanted the first argument or the first parameter that was passed to this function, uh, we could use the, 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 the number one variable and I'm accessing it using the dollar sign and curly braces as we're seeing here. Additionally, if we wanted all of the parameters, we can use that with the dollar sign symbol, curly braces around the at sign, right? But what's important to remember is that the parameters are not declared as part of the definition, which is a little bit strange coming from most other general purpose programming languages. The way that we call a function, as we just saw, with zero arguments would be just the function's name, right? But if we wanted to pass some arguments in, we pass those in as space separated values, just like we would if we were executing a command at the command line, right? So what we're effectively doing is establishing uh, a, a procedure in our bash script or in our bash session that looks and feels like any other command but allows us to uh, write some reusable functionality and put a name on it, right? And so this has the same form as executing a program or script and you need to be careful because if you accidentally write a function whose name is the same as some other command you wanted to run, you might overwrite it. So we could try that, for example, if I made a uh, command, or sorry, if I made a function named rm and echoed, uh-oh, and I ran rm foo, notice that we get, uh-oh, we don't get the, uh, we're not actually running the rm program. So if I wanted to unset that function, I could say unset function rm, and now if I were to write rm foo, we see that we are actually using the remove program that is uh, at the path bin rm, right? So uh, you can define functions and functions when bash goes to evaluate. Well, I'm looking for to run this command hello func or this command rm. It's going to first check and see, hey, do I have a function defined? in my context that I can evaluate. And if so, it's gonna go there first. Otherwise, it's gonna to look towards your system for programs that are in your path, such as this bin RM program, right? There are additional details, of course, to functions in Bash, and uh, the official documentation here is really well written. I would encourage you to check it out uh, as linked in the slides for, for more details. Next, let's talk about for in loops. These give us the ability to loop through a list of values. And if you're coming from a general purpose programming language, this should feel pretty familiar. 
Uh, what will be a little bit different is that our list of strings is something that is white space separated and isn't necessarily some value uh, such as an array or a list or a collection that you would otherwise be iterating through. Right? So we'll see that in just a second. But the syntax starts with four and then we give a name to the variable that we want to access each item individually by in the body of the uh, iteration of the loops iteration. And then our list of strings, which are the values that we will iterate over. The do command sets off the body of, or sorry, the do syntax sets off the body of the foreign loop. And inside of the, the body of the foreign loop, we can have commands. And again, we're going to have a variable by, that goes by whatever name we give it that we can access uh, per each iteration that gives us one of these strings individually. So what will feel different here is that we're, our strings list is going to be white space separated. And this has to do with uh, the way we tend to operate in a bash session in a bash shell. And we'll, we'll see examples of this in just a moment. So let's try writing a for in loop in bash. So I've cleared my output and I write the keyword for followed by the name of the variable that I want to appear uh, to be populated by each item in the list we're iterating through for word in and then here's going to be my list of inputs, right? So for example, uh, foo space bar space baths, right? So those are my input strings. Notice they're white space separated. And then I'm going to give the command or the keyword do and this begins the body of our loop, right? And in here we can say something like echo and then word. And then done is to say that this is the end of my loop body and now you can evaluate that loop, right? And so notice that we have foo, bar, and baz printed. So if I were to try this again and say for word in foo and then bar baz, what I wanna point out as interesting and distinct is notice that I have just a single unquoted string here, foo, space, and then a quoted string, bar and baz. And I'm going to show you one slight but commonly used uh, trick in writing these loops. It's commonly people will say they will use this explicit semicolon here to say this is the end of this statement, right? And normally the end of a statement is uh, implicitly marked by a new line. So we were doing this before, but here we can be explicit and say, hey, this is the end of the, the statement. And so the next statement is due. Right? And so I can write this all on one line and you'll see this is commonly used when people write for in loops in bash for word in foo bar baz do and then we can say echo word right? and done. And notice this time around that because we put uh, quotes around the bar in baz string that that became a single uh, string of input for this list otherwise. right? So we had only foo and then a single string after that bar baz, as opposed to each of these uh, words individually separated by uh, spaces and they were implicitly their own string values, okay? So what I'd like you to try doing uh, is in this next segment, try writing a function uh, named print dash all. So print dash all is going to be a function and I want you to try writing a loop construct for in to print all of the arguments that we pass to this particular function, right? So all of the arguments that we pass to print all, see if you can write a loop that will do that using the variables that you know about, right? And so you'll be able to access the at symbol variable to access all arguments and you wanna write a loop to loop through those. So pause the video here, try doing that and we'll pick up from there in just a moment. All right, great. So for, and I will use the word arg here. Previously we had used the word word, but again, we're defining a variable name here. So how we name that variable is up to us. For arg in, and then here I'm going to use the at expansion, right? And this expansion uh, of this variable will evaluate to multiple inputs and I'm gonna use the semicolon and then do, and then I'm gonna add my own spaces here to say echo, and then the variable arg that we're iterating through, and finally done, and the closing curly brace to end that function definition. Okay, so we've got this function print all, 
And so if we evaluate this function, print all, notice nothing gets echoed because there were no inputs. But if I were to try foo bar, we see that they're printed as uh, strings here, baz boz as input strings, and this works out as we would hope, right? And so we're gonna use this function to explore a related concept called shell expansions in the next video. But the quick uh, preview of what to expect here is if I look at my output here, uh, we can see that there are two markdown files in my current directory. And you could find some other files in the directories you're working in that might be similar. And if I were to say print all and then star.md, notice that we're saying uh, this shell expansion is called a glob and we're globbing against anything that prefix is prefixed uh, with any value and is suffixed with .md. So we're gonna match demo.md and hello vim.md in this current directory. And notice that when we ran that through our function, the output was demo.md and hello vim.md. That means that our function must have been evaluated with two inputs here, uh, with uh, the string demo.md and hello vim.md. And this is a powerful thing because notice that if we wanted to take some action to repeat some commands, right? Here we're just echoing that input out, but we could have had this script do something much more interesting like rename this file or move it somewhere else or compile this or, or take some action on it in some scripted form. Uh, we have a very easy way of handling the combination of some list of things we want to process that we can get through globbing and through some other means and then iterating through them in a list and that rep and that allows us to avoid repetitive work and needing to carry out commands one after the other after the other manually. So in this video, we looked at how to define a function and how to uh, write a simple little for in loop in bash.